As we begin this semester, I would like to take the opportunity to introduce the course objectives, give some tips on how to study and use your book, and provide an overview of human development. Whether you're using the online textbook, which everyone should have, or studying from a print version, there are some important areas of focus in each chapter. The overall objective of the course is to describe the development of key behaviors and concepts through the lifespan. Describe observed normal characteristics and behaviors of individuals of various ages. Identify tools for assessing developmental status. Describe the impact of developmental processes on family relationships and functioning and identify major health risk of people at different developmental levels. Each week, you will have a list of objectives for the week. Some modules will be one week and others will be two or more weeks. The learning objectives for the first week are to describe human behavior and how its study has evolved. Describe the domains and periods of human development. Give examples of the influences that make one person different from another. And discuss the principles of the lifespan perspective. I hope this semester introduces you to things you need to know about human development to prepare you for future healthcare courses. This is only meant to be an introduction and is certainly not comprehensive. This is a science-based course that focuses on the study of human development. Human development includes physical, cognitive, and psychosocial development of humans from conception to death. Generally, physical, cognitive, and psychological change rapidly through childhood and are presented in individual chapters in the textbook. After adulthood, some of the information may be more condensed as changes are not as rapid. Physical development is the development of the body and brain, including patterns of change in sensory capacities, motor skills, and health. Cognitive development is the pattern of change in mental abilities, such as learning, attention, memory, language, thinking, reasoning, and creativity. And psychosocial development are the patterns of changes in emotions, personality, and social relationships. All of these are important and all will be covered throughout each stage of development. The course will progress through the periods of the lifespan, which we recognize as being socially constructed, meaning they are not objectively defined. There is no specific period of time when a person moves from being an adolescent to an adult or an adult to late adulthood. It is defined by society and may be different in other cultures. The periods will be divided into eight sections for physical, cognitive, and psychosocial. Begin your study by reviewing the table 1.1 in your text and becoming thoroughly familiar with the major developments in each stage. The eight periods are premalial, which is conception to birth, infancy and toddlerhood, which is birth to age three, early childhood, ages three to six years, middle childhood, ages six years to 11 years, adolescence, ages 11 years to about 20 years, emerging adulthood and young adulthood, 20 to 40 years, middle adulthood, 40 to 65 years old, and late adulthood, 
as the period of time over 65 years old. As we progress through the course, we will discuss the influences of heredity, environment, and maturation, and the scientific evidence supporting their influence on human development. Part of everyone's development is dependent on the genes passed on from their biological parents. However, everything in the environment, from medications the mom takes while the baby is in the womb, to chemicals in the environment, to the educational system, also influence development. If you have ever heard of nature versus nurture, the nature is heredity and the nurture is the environment. The third major influence on development is maturation. This is the natural sequence of events that occurs as one learns to walk, talk, and reason. We all undergo this, but it is at different rates of speed, though there are predictable times. As you will read in your book, 50-year-old women don't experience puberty and 12-year-old girls don't experience menopause. Some of the other factors include our family structure, our social economic status, and then risk factors. We will explore the influence of the nuclear family those that we live with, and the extended family, which may include grandparents and other relatives. Over time, we have seen fewer families that include a mom and dad that are married, and we acknowledge that families are and should be defined by those that form the family unit. You may want to consider your family unit and how it influenced your own development. Another important factor in development is socioeconomic status, often referred to as SES. It includes income, educational and occupational levels. Thus, it is a combination of economic and social factors. Have you ever heard of food deserts? Imagine a food desert in an upper middle class neighborhood. It would not happen. You do see food deserts, as well as medical deserts, in lower middle class neighborhoods, and even more so in neighborhoods that suffer from poverty. Sadly, we must consider culture, race, and ethnicity in our study. Sadly, because there is so much disparity in our nation that is based on race and ethnicity. Yet, we should recognize that culture is important. The traditions, beliefs, values, language, art, and music of our cultures help us in our development and support us as we age. Ethnic groups have a wide variety within the groups, and many associate those with race. It is important to understand that race is a social construct. There is no scientific definition of race. However, it is considered in research and it am impacts how others are treated. So it's important to discuss. Finally, we will also consider critical and sensitive periods. This is a specific time when an event can have a significant impact on development. For example, there are critical times in fetal development that can result in birth defects that have a lifelong impact on one's development. You will notice that one of the terms referred to as plasticity it's the range of modifiable, modifiability of performance, modifiability or molding of the brain through experience, which we will consider. Think of this as plastic. Plastic can be molded and then become something that is firm.
Finally, I want to talk a little bit about study questions and questions you may have for me or for any instructor in your course. Begin your week by reading the summary and the key points that are at the end of your chapter before reading your chapter. Next, go through the chapter and take the time to make notes of all the new terms and read the definitions. I've provided you a list of those definitions for this week that I will post. I would recommend you put them on index cards or an app in your phone and you review them until you have them memorized. This week, you have a lot of new terms that may be new to you. I hope you will take the time to learn each of these terms. Finally, always take the time to study tables. Table 1.1 is really foundational knowledge for this course. I would commit that table and its content to memory. Generally, when authors put information in a table, it's because it's important. And it will be an easier way to present information in a memorable format. I hope that you will take the time to review your chapters, go through all of your assignments, and again, if you have questions, please contact me. I'm always available for Zoom conference calls during office hours. I can arrange to meet you on campus if you would prefer, and you can always contact me through the course message board. And if it's a question that would benefit the entire class, then post it in the discussion board where there is a place designed for questions that would benefit everyone. Thank you and welcome to class.